done for Rangers when I was there, and uh, I thought it was a lovely gesture. You wouldn't have got it after the game, I don't think. You took it away, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I remember playing in the semi-final, but uh, that was a long, long time ago. It was against Clyde. Can you remember when Clyde had a very good team, the Tommy Ring playing, and Coyle, and, and all those players. And uh, well, I was playing for Motherwell, of course, and uh, we lost that one. And uh, I think Clyde won the cup each other in the final. But of course, as you know, while I was still at Motherwell, we were playing in, in semi-final day when we don't get there. But it's lovely to be here, a great atmosphere outside, chat to all the fans, all the youngsters were, were coming up, you know, asking me where Jimmy Greaves was. <laughs> they, all, they all thought he was going, he was somewhere hiding, you know. But uh, I'm looking forward to the game because uh, you look at both sides, they both can play attacking football, they've got attractive forwards playing and skillful midfield players. So you, all in all, you would think it would be, you know, an attacking game with uh, plenty of goals. Well, you've got two forwards in the Hibs lineup, and you know very well, of course, who both have FA Cup winners medals. That's Steve Archibald, who won one with Tottenham in 1981, and Keith Houchin with Coventry, scoring that dramatic winner in 1987. What kind of impact do you think they may make in this afternoon's proceedings? Well, Houchin, obviously, I know quite a bit about uh, down in England. Good big player, good in the air, and uh, in fact, you know, the Hearts fans will tell you he's good in the air because he scored a cracking goal against them. And he's a mobile player as well, and uh, I think he'll be a, an asset to the Hibs. I think he'll be a very good player. Steve Archibald, well, you don't play for Scotland and teams like Barcelona unless you can't play. Now, of course, Celtic have had their problems, both fullbacks out through illness and injury, a combination, and they've taken the bold step of bringing an 18-year-old into their lineup. Now, how can, what kind of ordeal will this be for a young man like Steve Fulton? Well, obviously, he'll be looking for the more experienced players to guide him through the early stages of the game, but. Uh, I mean, if you've got the talent to get in the team there, you know, you're good enough to play on this stage. So there's the attractive sight of the teams taking the field, getting a warm welcome, of course, on this glorious afternoon. And let's give you a quick reminder of the lineups. There's the Celtic team. So no Morris and no Rogan, but Grant and Burns, very experienced professionals, filling the fullback positions. And up front, a lot of firepower with Joe Miller, Andy Walker, and the man in goal scoring form, Mark McGee, winning number 10. And there's young Steve Fulton. He was 18 years old last August. So what an amazing leap to start on this is. He's only started one Premier League match before. He's been substitute three times. He played in that match in Dubai against Liverpool when he showed his great composure. Young Greenup man, and he'll about to enjoy an occasion you'll never forget so the hips line up also they welcome back Gordon Hunter having shrugged off that knee injury Joe Tortolano is in at left back he uses his pace and running power Tommy McIntyre's good recent performances keep him on the side and three men up front Hibs have been criticised in the past for being a little bit negative but no question of that this afternoon Keith Houchin scored and went out for Coventry City against Tottenham two years ago Goal a game man he is for Hibs. It's only his third match in the Hibs lineup. So the referee this afternoon is Mr. George Smith from Edinburgh, 45 year old civil servant. And he is now organizing a minute's silence in respect for the tragic events which took place yesterday at Hillsborough at that FA Cup semi final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. So the referee waiting for the goalkeepers to take their positions. There's the minute silence commenced. yesterday 
And the team is now preparing for the Scottish Cup semi-final. And the fans at both ends now building up their support for the favourites. It will be Celtic who will start the match. Playing from left to right. And looking quickly out there at the team formations as Andy Walker and Mark McGee him on the way. It looks as though Hibs are playing with Tommy McIntyre at right back, Gordon Hunter beside Gordon Ray in central defence, Joe Tortellano on the left with the three men up that we mentioned, Hutchin, Archibald and Evans. Here's Gareth Evans getting his first touch of the ball, back it goes to Andy Gorham. Well, this will be an occasion for Gareth Evans also to remember, and Andy Gorham, very experienced now in terms of international football and now he's savouring a Scottish Cup semi-final for the first time. Here's Tommy Barnes for Celtic. First touch for young Fulton. Played forward by Aiken. They're very important in these early stages. I fancy Ian for Celtic to settle with their new formation. That's correct. Uh, but, you know, there, there's so many experienced players in the Celtic lineup that really and truly it shouldn't be a problem. I haven't seen Tommy Burns play at left back, but I gather that uh, he can fill a position very easily. But I've always said that I think if you're a good player, you can play in it. You know, fullback is not the hardest of positions to play. So here's Joe Miller in the break on the right. Stumbling at the wrong moment for Celtic. Here's Evans with his marker, Peter Grant. And a little bit of a nasty exchange there between the two players. Referee Smith, I think, may have a word with both. Indeed, he will take that action. A little bit of speech play followed the initial confrontation. And the referee making certain there's no misunderstandings in either camp about his treatment of the match. Gareth Evans appeared to be challenged fiercely in the back, but he did appear to react with a flying elbow, and the referee is making it very clear that he will stand for no continuation of any feud. Houchin and McCarthy get up together. It's Houchin who's penalised. Mick McCarthy allowed back into the Celtic side this afternoon after suspension by virtue of Fir Park becoming playable on Wednesday night for that rearranged league match, which ended two goals apiece, allowing him to complete his suspension. There's his free kick. Mark McGee's header. There's Tortolano. Wasting no time about the clearance. Billy Stark will take the throw. Well, he's left that to Grant. Here's Andy Walker. Now Miller. Stark to Grant. Miller again. He's away from Tortellano. And good covering there by Hunter. Cut off that ball intended for Andy Walker. A good play here by Joe Miller, showing a lot of pace, then strength to resist that challenge, whipping the ball across, and a good clearance by Hunter. Corner kick being taken by Steve Fulton. Headed on by McGee, there's Gorham. Stark brings it back in front of goal, and Paul Kane heads it away for a corner kick, and this really is a very fast start indeed by Celtic. That's Roy Aiken, who's all the way across to ensure the corner kick's taken quickly. McCarthy's in the box. There's McCarthy! Three minutes gone. Celtic take the lead and it's Mick McCarthy's first goal of the season. Well, what a goal to get. Uh... The marking was poor as far as the heads are concerned. There's Big McCarthy powering in there and a super header. But what a start for Celtic. So there's the header again by McCarthy. It was Keith Houchin who was entrusted with the task of marking McCarthy and that really was interesting for Hibbs to leave a forward with that particular chore inside their own box. But what a lift for Celtic right at the start of the match and Hibbs, of course, facing that major early set. Major 
test for Hibbs now. Celtic so hard to handle when they get their tails up. And that surely is the boost that Billy McNeil would have been hoping for early in the match. Here's Steve Archibald. Played across by Tortolano. It's away by Aiken. Here's Neil Orr. Now Houchin. McIntyre. Kane inside to Houchin. Challenge came from Grant. Good piece of defending there by Peter Grant. He was taken out of the play late by Paul Kane. It's a free kick given to Celtic. Right at the edge of the box, and Peter Grant shrugs off the knock. Well, Celtic certainly aren't messing about here now. Very hectic start to the match. And, uh, Big Mick McCarthy there, the goal scorer. You never think you're going to get one, especially as early as that, if you're a defender, do you? Well, certainly creates a lot of problems for Hibbs. And the confidence will, I'm sure, run through the Celtic ranks if they can retain this lead for 10 minutes or so. Here's Mark McGee. He's away from McIntyre. They were teammates at Aberdeen at one time, and there's Gordon Ray's header conceding yet another corner kick Gordon Ray, the hip skipper trying to lift his team here was McGee again on the left foot with a good cross and Ray had no option but turn that behind for the corner McCarthy this time mocked by Gordon Ray and the end swing end goal is behind for the goal you know, over the years, Celtic have always been the best team in football for getting to the byline job and getting crosses in. And again, they started the match in that vein. They've got down both flanks, get to the byline, get the crosses in. And it's always the best ball in the game. And uh, they're experts at it. And put, putting the Hibs players under tremendous pressure early on. McCarthy goes to win that from Houchin. Touched away by McGee to Fulton. Good ball inside to Miller. And Gordon Ray again to Hibbs' rescue, turning it away for the throw. Well, Hibbs under siege in these early stages. Here's Paul McStay. Back now with Bonds. Trying to link up with Mark McGee. That's Hunter's clearance. Aiken returns it. McGee picks it up again. Well, a man who's very much in the mood, but running out of space. It's cleared by Tortolano. McCarthy now with lots of time. And Peter Grant available. And the flag is up against Andy Walker. Offside decision, giving the free kick to Hibbs. challenging again but here's Steve Archibald now Evans easily held there by Pat Bonner Evans favouring the left flank for the moment with Archibald through the middle with Houchin and the throw goes to Hibbs Peter Grant doesn't realise that yet. Archibald looking for Houchin in the middle. Watched very carefully by Bonner. Swiddled in on top of him. Here's Evans, turning away from Grant. The elusive runner, Evans. This is promising for Hibbs. And it's turned behind by Roy Aiken. Bonner didn't reach it. This is great play from Evans. Turning away from Grant, sprinting forward, looking for the byline, playing it back across, and there was Aiken to turn behind. Hibbs have the corner kick. 
position though, supported by Gordon Ray in the box. Archibald on the goal line. Punched away by Bonner. Collins in the race with McGee. That'll be a Celtic throw. So ten minutes of the match gone. Celtic leading by one goal to nil. Mick McCarthy the scorer in three minutes. There's Collins and now Hunter. That's one for Archibald to chase. He's in behind Aiken, but Bonner is there. Archibald took a knock there from the Celtic keeper. Making light of it though. Still plays it forward. There's McGee. Miller going up with Tortolano. It breaks kindly for Miller. There's Walker. Miller once again on the byline. The chance is on. Andy Walker. The glorious chance for Celtic second. Well, lucky break here for Miller as Tortolano landed off with him without the play. Miller working this great one-two with Andy Walker. Walker making his way back into the area for this cross. What a chance this was. That was classic play, wasn't it? One-two onto the byline, cut it back. And really was a, a simple chance for Walker to Just lean back, got underneath it. Tremendous header there by McCarthy. Very commanding leap over Houghton. There's next day. Now uh, Fulton. Matched there by Paul Kane. I think Neil Law's got a, an important job today because he's got to try and subdue uh, Paul McStay and that's going to be a difficult job for him. Pouching inside to Archibald. They try to thread that through for Evans. Cover was there for Celtic. And here's Joe Miller. Winning 11, playing it outside right for the moment. Good running by Stark. The early ball inside and Walker couldn't make it. But Celtic really are in devastating form. It's been a quite incredible opening to this semi-final. Always a tense occasion and Celtic who have struggled in the last three matches. They drew against Motherwell, lost to Hamilton, lost to Rangers and they've opened up with tremendous style this afternoon. There's Barnes. Day. Off balance when he released the pass, allowing Evans to intercept. This is Collins. Now Evans again. Archibald goes to the left. Houchins on the right. Here's Paul Kane. Tackled by McStay. Now Archibald free on the left. It's a great ball inside, and Evans couldn't control the header. A superb driven cross this from Steve Archibald. Well, you have to say that. Uh... Evans possibly was a little off balance when he went up for it, but uh, I would have expected him to do a little bit better than that. But good build-up by Hibbs, and for once, you know, they played a bit of controlled football. Very challenging well with McGee, and you are was caught there. They tried to take the ball to safety, so it's a free kick to Hibbs. Skipper Gordon Ray. Houghton's layoff, there's Paul Kane, here's Archibald, the first time layoff for Evans, Collins takes over, Archibald again. Back it goes to Orr, there was a foul on Archibald. Three kicks been given, Archibald may have preferred the advantage was to be applied, but this is promising for Hibbs. Matt Bonner organising the Celtic ball. Paul Kane and John Collins are in charge of this set piece. Kane could bend this with his right foot, but Collins may take it to the left. There it is. There's Archibald. A fine snap header from Steve Archibald. Well, certainly some encouragement now for Hibbs, beginning to make an impact in the game. Stevie with a good header for the goalkeeper right in line. Collins to Ray. 
and Turan Tortola going to the same wall. And off the one for Aiken, there's Houchin. And Aiken kept his head. Going back to Pat Bonner. But you have to give credit to Hibbs. They've come back from that torrid opening from Celtic. And they're now creating some moves of their own. Tortolano wins it. There's Collins. Well tackled by Stark. Miller wins it from Collins. Here's Paul McStay. Barnes comes up on the left. There's Fulton. Good running by McGee. Twisting and turning to get the cross in. And good handling by Corum. Inside the six yard box. What a vicious ball it was, too. Mark McGee's been doing some good work down that left hand side. Whips in with his right foot, right across the, the space between the, the defenders and the goalkeeper. Always a nasty ball. A bit of wrestling going on there between Archibald and McCarthy, and the free kick goes to Hibbs. And Archibald suddenly making his presence felt in the match. He has really come into his own in the last five minutes or so, and clearly there will be a major threat to Celtic twice against them in the league at Easter Road early in the season. Collins and Kane again over the ball. Matt Bonner crouched on the line, not entirely happy with the positioning of the wall. There's Kane to Archibald, he was looking for John Collins. And it's really a lot of work into the set pieces. There's Andy Walker, impeded there by Hunter. Blatant body check by the young Hibbs defender. Results in a free kick for Celtic and a long walk for Hunter to be lectured by referees. Well, I reckon the defender make it to that was worthwhile. We're not condoning that, Jock, I hope. Certainly not, but I think that Gordon Hunter may think that he get good value for that and had the referee booked him, he may have regretted it. Uh, I would think so. There's McCarthy's free kick. It goes Billy Stark, it goes through to Miller. A high awkward ball from Stark. McGee judges it well. McCarthy and Archibald tangling again. It's Tommy Burns who pumps the ball forward and catches Andy Walker offside. Celtic operating with Walker through the middle, McGee favouring the left side of the attack with Miller on the right touchline. And that so far has served them well. And there's Gordon Ray's free kick. Archibald the target once again, a fine header. Here's Houchin. Archibald's available. The great ball in from Archibald. Well, we're really seeing the full range of the Archibald talents now. Taking the return ball here from Keith Houchin. He's looking at the power in this shot. Swerving towards the far post. Yes, he's beginning to have an impact in the game, Stevie Archibald. He's, he's getting involved in most of the Hibernian attacks. Looking good. Well timed by Stark. Off the line's clearance. McCarthy standing his ground with Houchin. This Paul McStay. Collins picks it up, but the free kick's given for the challenge by Orr. Well, Neil Orr's task for the afternoon is to curb the immense creative talents of Paul McStay. So McCarthy with the free kick. That's done by McGee. Ray got there ahead of Walker. Then it's a Celtic throw. Stark back to Miller. Tortolano showing him inside. Doesn't want him to hit that byline. The fullback succeeds. There's Collins. Houchin bundled from the rear by Mick McCarthy. That's a free kick to his. That's going to be a, a tussle that we'll see right to the final whistle, I'm sure. The two big fellas battling it out there. So 
Joe Tortolano will take this free kick for hits. The keeper Houchin. McCarthy wins that cleanly. Back with Ray. Evans was offside. Lines was flying up as soon as Ray's long ball was released. So it's Tommy Bonds now for Celtic. Walker coming off his mark, a great running by Fulton, he's lost Paul Kane. There's McGee and Miller. Mark McGee for Celtic. Hips are ripped apart again. The crucial goal here played by Mark Steve Fulton. Well, what a superb ball by Walker in the first place. It released Fulton down the left-hand side. Good running by the youngster. And then again, this ball played in the box. Low. That was the first effort. And it ran for McGee, who smashed it into the roof of the net. But, uh, you know, well manufactured goal by Celtic. Well, Steve Fulton will enjoy that. Probably there's no doubt about that. It will kindly for Mark McGee, it must be said, inside the six-yard box. But he doesn't need too many looks at the ball. And he's picked up his 18th goal of the season. 20 minutes into this semi-final. There's Miller again, and Ray cuts it off. Well, Higgs will be particularly upset about that second goal, bearing in mind their improvement in form as the impact of the opening goal is wearing off. There's Steve Fulton going back into position, just 18 years old. You're right enough, Jock, but the Hibs had just come back into the game. They were beginning to... Uh put Celtic under a little bit, but all of a sudden, you know, they found themselves two down. There's John Collins winning it from Miller. Very strong, talented young man, here's Archibald. Or finds Dennis Evans. Runs with a cross, looking for Houchin, that's picked up cleanly by Pat Bonner. Piece of goalkeeping. Well, against a lesser goalkeeper, this wouldn't have been a bad ball from Gareth Evans looking for Houchin. Well taken. Hunter's header. Goal Stark. Hunter again. And foot up against Mark McGee on Gordon Hunter. The free kick goes to Hicks. Tortolano plays it forward, McCarthy on his own, and Archibald was caught offside. A free kick to Celtic. And Hibbs again have to settle down because two is not impossible to retrieve, but three surely would signal the end of their cup effort. So there is a tactical dilemma out there for the Hibbs players. header, there's Gareth Evans got down, they tried to go between the two players Miller and Grant and Mick McCarthy thumps the ball against the head of Evans, accidentally it must be said but it isn't much consolation for the moment for young Gareth Evans McCarthy whose players struck the young Hibs player there he goes, trying to take on the two players. It's brought down, it's thumped straight back at him by McCarthy. The young Hibs number 11 recovers quickly, and the free kick will be taken. This time, I think, by Tortolano. Lost Houchin, Aiken wins it. There's Collins, beaten to the ball by Fulton. McIntyre turning it back towards Hunter. again winning the high ball Fulton took a knock there from Neil Orr free kick's been given Neil Orr is the man whose main task is to protect the Hibs back four and that means operating in the middle against Paul McStay that's Aiken no hope there for Mark Begee 
Well, for Hibs now, Ian, is it a case of settling for a little bit of composure at the back, or should they be all out in attack? Well, it's an uphill task for them, but I feel they've had the, the best play when they brought their midfield players into the game and, and played a little bit of football. When they don't and they hump it from the back, uh, as we've seen, you know, they're just Celtic are holding the line and they're getting caught offside. He's only walking now for Celtic. Miller available inside. And Collins wins it back neatly for Hibbs. This is Evans. Paul Polano locks it through the middle. That's the kind of high ball which St John was talking about. That's will penalise for a bit of jostling there with Mick McCarthy. See, McCarthy's getting most of the high balls, Jock. So, you know, the Hibs are not really getting much joy out of that one. And I feel that they should be playing through the middle. You know, through Kane and Collins because I think they're talented players and uh, you know, I think they must get a hold of the ball for a spell and get back into the game. So McCarthy with the free kick, looking for McGee. Hunter wins it well. And Joe Miller, McGee back to Stark. Inside it goes to Paul McStay. Hibbs a bit of very interesting alteration. Paul Kane's in the middle of midfield with Neil Orr on the right side. And the shot from Paul McStay goes wide. That is a very interesting change, though, Ian, with Neil Orr now marking Steve Fulton. Yes, maybe Neil, Neil Orr thought it was going to be a bad day for him playing in the middle against McStay. Uh, I don't know why they've done that. Uh, obviously, something within the team structure themselves it, it might fancy Orr out there. McCarthy doing very well once again in the air. Misunderstanding there between Walker and McStay. Here's Orr. His new role on the right side of midfield, looking for Archibald. We tried to anticipate the headed clearance from Roy Aiken. And the decision goes Celtic's way. Steve Archibald clearly displeased about that. Thumps the ball into the ground with a show of dissent, which caused the wrath of referee George Smith. Warning is sufficient. Back with Bond. Awkward bouncing ball, Tommy McIntyre underneath it. Right away by Ray, a lot of space there for Steve Fulton, but he's content to accept the throw. Fulton getting away from Kane, great play from the youngster. Here's Andy Walker! 27 minutes gone, Tommy Craig comes out to celebrate and it's shaping to be a rout. Steve Fulton is the creator once again. Again, lovely skill by the youngster. Turns the ball well, beautifully. Inside came. Again, the little cutback. He'd spotted that Walker was here and that's a lovely goal. That was a little side put in the corner. You, you know, a good striker score goals like that. Beautifully placed this by Andy Walker, but look at the skill again of young Steve Fulton. He's away from Paul Kane, looks up, measures the pass for Walker. He slides that beyond Andy Gordon. Well, Andy Walker gets his 15th goal of the season. Yet another return on that £375,000 fee paid to Motherwell. And there's young Steve Fulton. Well, what an afternoon it is for him. Created of two excellent goals so far for Celtic. And we're not yet at the half-hour mark. 3-0 to Celtic. And here's Paul Kane. Well, Hibs have been on the end of a couple of thrashings from Celtic at Hamden. In the early 70s, the cup final of 72 faced 6-1. In the League Cup final, it was 6-3. And Celtic looking very much in the mood to go on from here. Hunter's high ball. Brent and Evans together as they have been for much of the match. It's a Celtic throw. Good play from Collins. There's Kane. 
That's aim for McIntyre on the far side. The young Steve Fulton gets there first to concede the throw. Here's Gordon Ray with a pass back. Well, Hibbs really must be feeling shell-shocked at the moment. Coming into this match with lots of hope, indeed perhaps even some expectation. And suddenly it's all turned sour for them. Half an hour of the semi-final gone, they're uh, trailing by three goals to nil, but they do have a free kick now just outside the box. Foul committed by McCarthy, going for the high ball with Houchin. Hibbs really do need a boost very quickly now if they're to think in terms of a fight back. Pat Bonner still adjusting the wall. It's Paul Kane and John Collins again over the ball. Here's Kane. And it's held at the second attempt by Bonner. Good goalkeeping once more. This is well taken by Paul Kane. Past the wall. Putting Bonner at full stretch there. And he gathered the ball in before Archibald could get there. Paul Kane takes a good free kick. I saw a game against Aberdeen uh, where he cracked one in. Uh, so he bent that one round. They need a little break, Hibbs. You, you feel at this stage you need to give a little turn, a little rub of the green, you know, to try and get back into the game. Under pressure immediately from these hungry Celtic players now. There's Mark McGee still looking for more action in front of Andy Gorham. All next day with the throw. There's McGee. Robbed by Collins. Takes it back from Orr. Houchin trying to find Evans. Well, Keith Houchin hasn't yet turned out for him without scoring. He's pulled two, scored two, and this is his third outing. If he's going to score, they'll have to try and get the ball out wide and then in, because at the moment... All they're doing is looking for him with long balls up the middle. And some determined challenging there by Mick McCarthy pays off as he wins the ball from Houchin. Celtic have possession again with Barnes. There's Paul McStay. Walker linking with Fulton. Oh, that's great play again from Celtic. Chance to go on the flanks. And that cross too high for a diminutive figure like Joe Miller's. So the throw goes to Hibbs and Joe Tortolano. Push in the back by Grant on Hutchin, right in front of the referee's eyes. Archibald signals for the ball. Tortolano trying to oblige, it's helped on by Kane, there's Houchin. Running into Aiken. Next day to start, Aiken continues the run. Met there by Ray, two skippers together, and here's space again for Fulton. Such a composed young man. And about his first error of the match, but a lucky break for Celtic as the ball breaks for Barnes. Or has got to get back towards Gorham. McIntyre. Archibald seemed to get a call there from Houchin to leave it. And it's Kane. And despite the pressure applied by Gareth Evans, well taken by Bonner, and Roy Aiken going to remonstrate with Evans is pushed aside by Archibald well it appeared as though the ball was there to be challenged for and the referee appears to have given a free kick to Celtic but the goalkeeper being well protected here Ian well it's a hobby horse of mine about goalkeepers you know that I always feel that they come out and they come for the ball and they knock players down to get there and nobody says a word and yet if somebody bumps them they start uh, complaining but I think that the problem there was that Big Roy was wanting to referee the game and the referee decided it was his turn so here's an early change about to be made by Hibbs. It's very interesting indeed. They're going to take off Tommy McIntyre, who's been playing it right back, who clearly is 
something of the scapegoat perhaps in the Hibs camp because Steve Fulton has performed so well and before any changes made here's Walker with Fulton he's brought down there by Hunter and that is not is it a penalty kick no the referee appeared a point towards the spot but no penalty kick it's still Celtic in possession Graham Mitchell is the player waiting to come on for Hibs and the ball is out of place, so the substitution can be made. Well, a clear indication that the Hibs manager, Alec Miller, is not entirely happy with the performance of Tommy McIntyre. He's been playing it right back. He hasn't been able to cope with the menace provided by Steve Fulton. So the former Aberdeen defender is withdrawn. And the former Hamilton Aki's central defender, Graham Mitchell, goes on. Actually, the... You have to feel sorry for McIntyre, you know, he was getting torn apart down that right-hand side of the field there as the Celtic was surging down, getting to the byline on that side. So the alteration we made with Gordon Hunter appearing to move to right back to justify the number two in his back with Graham Mitchell slotting in beside Gordon Ray in defence. Well, that's a question of perhaps closing the stable door. Without being unkind to McIntyre, he did appear to be pretty well exposed there. He had a lot of cover protecting him on the far side as Fulton came forward. And there's Neil Orr, Hunter in his new role. And there's Paul Kane. Trying to find space to send over a cross. He did very well indeed and forced McCarthy into that. Clearance at full stretch. It's a corner kick to Hibbs. Gordon Ray still looking for a goal which would perhaps change the Hibbs fortunes. Got away easily by Stark. Not unsure what Collins intended. Punching tackle that was from Paul McStay. Archibald making room for himself. Ray switching play to the left to Tortolano. Evans has to return it quickly. Good ball inside. Here's Orr. Immediately challenged by McStay. Hunter has the chance to use his pace on the right. He's caught very late by Barnes, who acknowledges the foul instantly. Well, Gordon Hunter is a very, very quick player indeed. And it was perhaps that pace which deceived Tommy Barnes. Look at this again as Hunter accelerated to the ball. Barnes was out of reach, caught the young Hibs defender. And he will now be the first player in the match to be shown in the other card. And Gordon Hunter, of course, player who only just made the semi-final he's been fighting injury for much of the season Barnes apologizes to him and Gordon Hunter really is a man who has won the wars this season and Hibbs having just made a substitution we're very anxious to see him back in his feet well it was a late tackle by Tommy Barnes but I'm sure Tommy got there as early as he could <laughs> wasn't quite on the legs he used to have but, I mean, he's not that kind of player, Tommy Burns, is he? He's not a vicious player in any way. And uh, it, it was just a late tackle, but it was an accidental tackle. Well, if you haven't got a ticket, there's one solution to the problem. Well, the flats overlooking Hamden Park. Oh, well, they're giving you a wave, job. So the match will restart with this free kick. Gordon Hunter is back on his feet. Well, let's hope he recovers quickly. And Neil Orr will have to take that again. And Gordon Ray will be upset about that. He appeared to have made an excellent run to meet that cross. Nick McCarthy will no doubt argue that he would have had it covered had it been for real. Well, the referee not entirely happy with the positioning, but Neil Orr reacting now to the linesman's orders oh, are you happy about that says Nilor 
Free kick is deflected, an awkward one. It comes out towards Collins. Here's Evans. Making for the byline. Fear to be impeded there by Aiken. The referee saw nothing wrong with that. Gareth Evans did. Protested too strongly. And he will be in trouble. Well, real folly for Evans. Well, he's a silly boy because it wasn't a foul. He knocked the ball, but he could never get there. And he tried to play himself... You know, against uh, Roy Aiken there, and uh, it just the referee noticed that and says, carry on, it was uh, a dead ball. And after that early warning, following the little tussle with Peter Grant, Gareth Evans really could have expected little else. Uh, outburst. That's done by Stark, there's top one as header, well next day. And Collins in quickly on McGee. Perhaps they've readjusted uh, or has come back into midfield. And the reason I think Jock that played him wide was to, to try and protect McIntyre out on that side during that spell. But he's back in central midfield again. The ball goes for the throw to Hibbs. Well, there on Mick McCarthy. Archibald complains to no avail. Free kick to Celtic. So inside the closing five minutes of what has been a tremendous first half for Celtic. Three goals to nil, they lead. McCarthy's free kick finds Joe Miller. Well, that was an ambitious ball, which you... I have to think he might not have tried but for that three goal push. McCarthy's header. Paul Kane eases himself into space. He's hustled all the way by McGee. Mitchell turns it back. McCarthy, but he's doing a bit of pushing there this time on Houchen. Well, he's very aggressive in the air, Mick McCarthy, and it usually serves him well, but occasionally gets him into trouble with the referee. So could John Collins or Paul Kane provide a lifeline here for Hibbs from the set piece? Kane makes the first run and the shot. And Roy Aiken did brilliantly there, easing that away from Steve Archibald, who was hovering there like a vulture right in front of Bonner. Tremendous strike that from Kane. Bonner couldn't hold it. Look how close Archibald was, but Aiken read that well. Got a kick from Collins. It's one well in the air by McCarthy again. There's Neil Orr fighting hard for Hibbs. Get it back to Mitchell. Gorham has sorted this out as Paul McStay blocks that clearance from Mitchell. And the offside flag catches out John Collins. Roy Aiken has taken a seat for a moment. Well, he really must be in trouble because he doesn't like to show pain. He's on the ground, so he may have taken a knock as he made that clearance a moment ago. So the Celtic skipper is back on his feet very quickly. No work this time for Brian Scott, the Celtic physio. Well, a little while, Ian, since you've seen Celtic in the flesh, what's your impression of this first half? Very impressed with him. Uh, I said before I was looking for an attacking game, and I was certainly getting that from him. Uh, entertaining football, this. It uh, really is, you know, a delight for the, the big crowd here at Hamden. Well, good play from Collins, sidestepping Paul McStay. Comes up to Orr. The ball is aimed for Steve Archibald. He did well to reach it. There's Kane again. Well, very keen to show his shooting power once more, but well off target that time. And what hopes for Hibbs? Well, at this stage, you have to say that uh, they badly need a goal, Jock. Otherwise, it's uh, all over for them. Uh, I do feel that, as I said, if they can play a bit of football, they 
they must try to get hold of the ball and control the game for some stage because when they just pump it forward there the Celtic defenders are winning the two central defenders are winning most of the high stuff today and uh, they've got to look for other ways around it and I think the, the way to do it is to knock it into the midfield players and play from there and the Celtic in the break again McGee sprinting forward it has Walker in support in the middle patient build up there's some Celtic here's Fulton Walker is in there with Ray, there's Joe Miller, deflected by Ray over the top, it's a corner kick to Celtic, with Hibbs living dangerously once again, superb build up once more, Walker finding Fulton, what a great left football that is, breaks back to Joe Miller, Ray on the deck did enough to deflect the ball over, oh beleaguered Hibbs skipper, he's worked very hard indeed against the tide in this first half, Gordon Ray, we're into stoppage time in the first half. Up goes Billy Stark. This is Evans. Archibald wins it from McCarthy. Releases Evans. Paul McStay getting back. And a slip at the wrong moment. That means it's a throw to Hibbs. Mitchell. Inside it goes to Gordon Ray. And there goes the half-time whistle, Celtic go off with a key goal lead provided by Mick McCarthy, then Mark McGee, and the third came from Andy Walker, all within the first half hour. So a very happy scoreline for Celtic, problems for him. Appreciative Celtic fans, as the referee, George Smith, gets the second period of 45 minutes underway. And Hibbs... Pushing forward straight away with a throw taken by Paul Kane. Here's Archibald's return pass. Well, Archibald certainly showed signs in the first half that he could trouble the Celtic defence. There's right Aiken turning it back to Pat Bonner. Well, I know that would have been heavy discussions in that Hibbs dressing room, I've no doubt. And I wonder if that can make any impact at all on the proceedings for this second period. There's Walker backing into Ray. Kane lofts it back to Andy Gorham. And Hibbs have opened up with the midfield three the way it started. That's Kane on the right or in the centre and Collins on the left. And Keith Houchin has got a free kick. He's protesting vehemently towards referee Smith, but the free kick has already been given. As Mick McCarthy, who is now being spoken to by referee Smith, and that will be for persistent infringement. So there are no changes in either lineup except the one made in the first half by Hibbs, replacing Tommy McIntyre with Graham Mitchell. Celtic have in reserve John Trainer and Owen Archdeacon. And Hibbs still have to call upon Eddie May, should they think fit before the end so a goal kick to set <laughs> he's header there's Andy Walker so Steve Fulton has done some damage to that left wrist some repairs carried out at half time. Not at all clear when that happened. Hutch and stumbling. There's Barnes with Fulton. Over the head of Gordon Ray, but he knew that Mitchell was behind him. Fine sweeper, Graham Mitchell. going away from start but running into McStay he was fouled that's a free kick to Hibbs which Collins would like to take quickly but Celtic making sure that can happen easily here's Tortolano and Evans stopped there by Miller inside is Stark McStay met by Orr here's Paul Kane Evans with Collins on the outside Collins with Neil Orr popping up on the right. 
Making for the byline, a fine cross by Orr. And cleared well by Joe Miller, who is back, marking Gareth Evans. Just Tortellano, Evans with a header. Archibald trying to control it. Well, that's putting some pressure on the Celtic defence. There's a lot more purpose about Hibbs' work at the start of this second half. And uh, Stevie Archibald, just a little bit unfortunate that the ball didn't run kindly for him in the box there. A long ball, which McGee gets his hit to, but he couldn't direct it accurately. Fulton playing it forward for McGee. This is Burns. Clearance by Mitchell. Touch football there from Celtic, but Neil Orr wins it back for Hibbs. This is Evans trying to outpace Grant. Here to get a handoff there by Peter Grant, who looks thoroughly aggrieved about the referee's decision to give the free kick. Evans certainly has the pace to take Grant on, you know, if he gets a chance to have a run at him. Uh, I thought Grant got his elbow in his face as he went. I see him get his elbow up there. Tortellano's free kick. Came off the head of Burns. Maybe a throw to Hibbs. Celtic being pinned back at the start of the second half. Ouchin trying to find room for a cross. Getting help now from Collins. Fulton turns it away. That's a throw right at the corner flag. shows himself, there's Collins with the cross one as well out of his goal chance for Evans, now Archibald <laughs> Hibbs pull one back and Steve Archibald who does it we're six minutes into the second half and can Hibbs now spark off a fight back if Pat Bonner got everything in here in the first half he came well out for this one under challenge, missed it for once you could say that Hibbs got a little bit of a break because it hit a Celtic player and ran kindly for Steve, knocked it in the corner. So there was Collins with that high cross. Why Bonner came so far, I'm not quite sure. There was the break that you mentioned here, that break for Steve Archibald to score his 13th goal of the season. He's now taken a hefty knock on that right leg, but he has pulled Hibbs back with something the hope of saving the match the deficit cut to two well they've got the, the, the goal at a good time in the, in the second half you know nice and early so it's given them plenty of time and you know Celtic are under siege at the moment and Neil Orr with a free kick and the fact that he would be in the fire if Hibs could get another and they went far away with that header from Paul Kane Aggressive piece of running by Paul Kane, attacking this ball in the air, getting up well in front of his marker. It was Mick McCarthy and Bonner is relieved to see it over. Follow perhaps for Celtic again. Do they settle down with this two goal lead or do they go and look for another? Well, Celtic being Celtic, I should think, will, will carry on in attack when they've got the ball. But uh, as I said before, the Hibs have come out in this half and uh, they've been far more aggressive in their play. Miller well, now trying to get away from Evans, but two very quick players together. Evans wins it. Collins has a lot of that by next day. Let's put it Grant. Now Stark. McGee, Tortellano's tackle, the tackling's getting tougher and tougher as the game goes on. Especially with Hibs now sensing the prospect of a dramatic recovery. That's Paul McStay, that's a great pass inside the fullback for Miller and he couldn't quite reach it in time. A goal kick to Hibs. 
had the misfortune to miss what's gone before and have just joined us. The scoreline is Celtic 3, Hibs 1. Three nil at half time to Celtic. Hibs hitting back with a Steve Archibald goal early in the second half. And the match very much alive. Here's Paul McStay. Fulton inside. Here's McStay. Turns back to Aiken. Celtic really trying to settle again. They've had their feathers ruffled well by Hibbs at the start of the second half. Gordon Hunter can't use Gorham without running the risk of Mark McGee intercepting. There's a challenge by Andy Walker which results in a free kick to Hibbs. Great control from Miller. Stepping away from Collins, using McStay in the middle. Collins was caught in two minds, I think, about that pass at the start. Hunter turned it away. Throw to Celtic. Fulton tackled firmly by Paul Kane. Result is a throw to Celtic. And there's Walker. It's missed by Mitchell. McGee couldn't control it. And the shot on the turn. There's McStay racing to retrieve possession. Tangling with Cortellano, who concedes the corner kick. Referee Smith. Fulton take the short one to Grant. Calls the ball back. Fine cross, but Gorham judged it well. And that's one for Archibald to chase. He's on his own for the moment. Up front for Hibbs. Needs support. Holding play up, waiting for his colleagues to join him. One of them is Tortolano. And he's held there by McStay. There'll be trouble here for Paul McStay. That was a deliberate foul. And that really is out of character for Paul McStay. He realised he was beaten there by Tortolano and just held him up quite deliberately. So there'll be a yellow card for the Celtic and Scotland midfield man. And a free kick to Hibbs. in number seven, way five, as Tortolano plays it in. There's one well by McCarthy. This is Paul Kane. Now Evans! Breaks back for Houchin. And Bonner is in the way. Celtic have survived. But you couldn't come any closer to a goal for Hibbs on this. Well, when the ball fell for Houchin here, you, you can maybe see that Ray was just square of him. Had he squared it, Ray was going to just a side foot it in. Watch this, when the ball ran free, he's got it there, and Ray is on his right-hand side, and he hit it straight at the goal for Well, Keith Houchin must be very upset indeed about that. He hasn't yet matched his goal game record. And that would have been a goal which would have had an incredible impact on this semi-final. Hibbs looking completely out of it at half-time. And suddenly now, from setting up an incredible climax for the match. So the throw this time goes to Hibbs on the far side. The throw this time to Celtic. Collins going back. Start going inside. Here's Kane. Hunter coming up from right back. 
Trying to play that beyond Barnes for the running figure of Houchen. Next day turning it away from Kane. Kane gets a word from the referee for being a little bit reckless going in behind Paul McStay. That noise you hear coming from Hibs supporters. Will appear to be a lost cause, no longer appears so. So a circuit play on the ground as this move develops. Here's Peter Grant playing it inside. And now there will be a hold up. The player on the ground, I think, is Andy Walker. He took no part in that particular move. Definitely content that he's all right and fit to continue. A head free kick. And there's Evans. Collins tries to take over, and losing the ball to Miller. There's Miller again, coming inside. Fine play, finding Stark on the right. That's into the path of Miller again! Well down to Joe Miller and Billy Stark between them, they created this move for Celtic. Miller's pass really Stark initially, he then went through for that return ball and pulled the shot just wide. Barcelona. The ball's on the way for a Celtic throw. Past the hour mark now, still 3 1 to Celtic. There's Andy Walker and now Barnes. Next day picks it up with a shooting chance. It's blocked by Mitchell. Carthy to Barnes. Tempo came from Orr and raised clearance. Got down well by McCarthy. Hunter thumbs it back to Gorham. Well, that's good play from Archibald, controlling it well under pressure. Evans taking up good position on the left. Trying to go past Peter Grant. Power in the cross though, and it's Joe Miller. He's talked a lot. Now McStay. That's good play by McStay. Joe Miller has possession. Walker and McGee up with him, so is Fulton Butt. Hibbs defence judging that well, stepping forward at the right time and catching Walker and McGee offside. Well, certainly nothing like as impressive a second half from Celtic here. No, Celtic uh, have looked a bit ragged, although I must say in the last uh, five minutes or so, they're sort of feeling their way back into the game. But uh, all credit to Hibbs, you know, if they can keep this pressure up on them, you know, I can see them scoring another goal. This is Gordon Hunter. Down by Fulton. We think catching one John Collins off balance. And then throw them together again. That's another foul by the Celtic player. Good three kick. Kane over the free kick. There's Hunter. Switching play to the far side through Orr to Tortellano. 
one for Houchin to chase, but his marker is there, Mick McCarthy. He's very anxious to get the ball in the Celtic box to use the striking skills of Archibald and Houchin. Supported well from midfield by Kane and Collins. McCarthy won it, but it's back with Tortolano. McCarthy again, but his clearance results in a corner kick to Hibbs. So the pressure remains on the Celtic defence. Well, McCarthy looking not entirely happy with his colleague's commitment at this stage. Fulton's pass releasing Miller on the right. Break on for Celtic. Walker screaming for the ball in the middle. Still Miller in possession. Hibbs getting men back now. Paul McStay takes over. He's challenged instantly by Kane. The tackle was much too high. And the free kick goes to Celtic. And Paul Kane certainly got back very quickly to help his defence and had Miller chosen to release that ball earlier towards Walker in the middle Hibbs would really have been in trouble so Paul McStay getting some urgent treatment looking back to the, the corner kick there that uh, started the attack for Celtic Tortellano had gone down and stood by Evans at the corner flag and Evans doesn't use him and gave a, a bad corner kick as it happened in you know, and then Tortellana's caught at the corner flag. I can never understand that. It, there's no point going down there and standing in that position unless you're going to get the ball. Otherwise, you, you're caught out of position, which is what happened. And the result of the break, which came from that corner kick. Celtic have this opportunity to test Andy Gorham. The kick will be taken by Billy Stark. Was intended for McGee, who had crept into an offside position. Mark McGee's been quiet this half, hasn't he? You know, he had such an impact in that first 45 minutes, and he's been subdued for the 20 minutes of the second. There's Keith Houchin. Neatly by Buns. Back with Ray. Seeking out Gareth Evans on the left. Archibald may well be offside, yes. Celtic defence were looking for that. So no luck for Archibald. Black armband, just to remind you, interrupting the events at Hillsborough yesterday. Mitchell's header. Kane tripped by Fulton. Quick free kick, hips on the move again with Gordon Hunter. McGee tackling back, and doing a good job defensively. Well, a little bit of nastiness creeping in there, and the referee, I think, will speak to both players. Frustration there for Hunter, and Mark McGee doesn't want to wait around to be spoken to by the referee. He's going to have to, though. Uh, Celtic manager Billy McNeil is out of the dugout. It's a sign of uh, Hibbs' dominance that the Celtic forwards are now having to chase back to him. Calming influence of referee George Smith. Before this free kick can be taken by Neil Orr. That's towards Archibald. Tackled well by Barnes. Disappointment for Tommy Bonds, who was looking for the throw. Crucial phase in the match. Hibbs pressing for a second goal, which would set them up for a big finish. Pitch into Archibald. Well, Archibald had turned and walked away from that as soon as he released it. That's the apology to his teammates inside. Tell you, Roy Aiken is doing some urging of his players. 
not happy with the second half performance making sure there's no lapse in concentration now letting Hibbs break back in the match here's Aiken now not too pleased with his own clearance there's Gordon Hunter perhaps will helping it on towards Houchin Walker doing well to ease the ball to Stark. This is Miller. Oh, Tortolano brings down the Celtic winger. That was a bad challenge by the young fullback. Didn't do too much damage happily. Three kicks being given. And referee George Smith content to give the free kick. No further action. Corner kick's been given, it was turned behind by Joe Tortolano. So Celtic now have the chance to look for the goal, which would surely kill off this cup tie. Up goes Roy Aiken. Carthy also making his way forward. Fulton's corner. This is Aiken. Delicate ball inside, Gorham wins it well. Tortolano with a long, hopeful ball upfield. No problems there for Peter Grant. Good play from Celtic. Peter settled again. The race is on, but Tortolano has lots of pace. Great control from Archibald, stepping away from Stark. Here's Gareth Evans. Checking inside, here's Paul Kane. And Roy Aiken spotted the danger, he knew all about Kane's shooting power. And a very good tackle there from Gordon Ray. captain once again this is Houchin and now Kane no progress made though by Hibbs they'll have possession though Grant running it back Evans, they've had a fair old tussle these two, Peter Grant and Gareth Evans and Evans has certainly proved to be a hot handful. Yes, it's been an interesting uh, little tussle as you say and uh, I, I mean I think if Evans can get a run at him at Grant, you know he can uh, have the better of him. Houchin looking up, finding Kane in midfield. There's a lot. Stay doing the hustling. Here's Graham Mitchell holding off Andy Walker. Kane to Collins. That's towards Houchin. Kane, that's Collins again. He has Hunter on the right. Here's Collins again. And now they saw a depth with that left foot around the box. But it's Billy Stark to tidies up for Celtic. You see, when Hibs have got the ball and try to play a bit of football, they have a little bit of success, Jock, you know, and I think they've got to persevere with that. So the header forward by Graham Mitchell, it's Andy Walker who's been penalised for forming a back for Mitchell. We kick the Hibs. Fortuitous blowing a whistle by the referee because Evans was off. That's Graham Mitchell's free kick. Fulton dropping back to defensive position for the moment. Setting it up for Buns, but Hunter is there at the same time. 
ball goes Hibbs way. McCarthy comes it forward. Gordon is there with Mark McGee. He's very good in this position. That's a fine tackle by Ray. Corner kick to Celtic. Still leading by three goals to one. The second half wears on now, and time running out for Hibbs. Just 15 minutes left for play. Joe Miller with the corner. Turned behind by Houchin. That makes it another corner to Celtic. And they'll be very happy to keep the ball around the Hibs penalty box for as long as possible. Fulton's corner. Up goes Aiken. Milor drags the ball clear. Archibald. Breaks inside for Kane, that was for Houchin. Oh, a misunderstanding there between Kane and Houchin. McCarthy was under no misapprehension though, he went to win the ball. The Hibs have it back. Collins now to Mitchell. There's Kane. Tackled strongly there by Paul McStay. And Tortolano found the pass back for Gorham. Time running out for Hibs, Ian? I'm afraid so, but uh, I mean, we, we've all seen cup ties that uh, boil up in the last five minutes, never mind with about what, 13 or 14 minutes to go. Anything can happen yet, but you've got to think the Celtic have now seen the worst of it because uh, they were put through the mill in the early stages of the second half, but appear to have weathered the storm now. A lot of credit due to Hibs for that. Eat out at half time, they could have an excuse for thinking it was too big a task, but they certainly have given it their best shot. And I'm sure they'll still get something more to offer, but so is Joe Miller. And great handling once again from Andy Gore. It really is a feature of his play how well he takes these awkward balls on the deck. He was Joe Miller trying to be shown inside there by Tortolano. He still managed to make his way past him and outside again, and that's really good goalkeeping. particular hurry now with Celtic having that two-goal cushion provided by virtue of the blistering opening half hour when they scored three times through Mick McCarthy, Mark McGee and Andy Walker. They're heading back well in the second half. One goal to show only though for their efforts from Steve Archibald. And they now have to conjure up two within the next 12 to 13 minutes if they're to stay in the Scottish Cup. Layoff from the chest to Collins. Collins again to Kane. There's Hunter. Houchin now taking the ball on the run. And Aiken did just enough to win it back. Well, Archer will be a run inside, but these two, of course, have had only one game before today to develop any kind of understanding. The Celtic fans to sing, sensing the winning post now. They were quiet for a long spell at the start of the second half on Hibs were hitting back with all they had, but now these Celtic supporters clearly believe their team is in the Scottish Cup final. It's day two stop.
linking with Walker. Now he wants to link with Bunge. McGee on the ton, great play and a fine tackle again from Gordon Ray. Is it a fine match for Hibbs? Trying to hold together that beleaguered defence in the first half. All battling manfully to keep Hibbs alive. Comes to Aiken. Joe Miller now on the left. There's ten minutes left. Here's Paul McStay. Possession all important to Celtic now. Here's Peter Grant. McStay wants it again. Here's Paul Kane playing it forward. Archibald trying to trouble both Aiken and McCarthy. He wins a throw for Hibbs. towards Archibald, holding off his marker, into the part of Kane it goes, as Houchin, well the first touch wasn't quite good enough, Celtic going to move again with Fulton on the left, there was so much trouble in the first half hour, that's intended for Joe Miller over on the far side, Portolano gets there first but he has to concede the corner. with nine minutes remaining. Aiken strolling forward to the box. McCarthy staying back this time. Nice corner. Gordon Ray wins it from Aiken. The two captains together. Fulton still. Aiken wants to be involved once more. Back Keeler finds Aiken. That's a great effort from Aiken. Well, the intention was clear. A little bit of class there from Roy Aiken, wasn't it? A lovely little back heel that set him up, but Roy looking to bend one in the top corner and uh, just a yard to him. Would have been a nice one if it had gone in, Roy. So, Roy Aiken on the score sheet. Only managed that once this season so far. Hibs who now have not only Celtic but the clock for an enemy. Time rapidly running out, 3-1 to Celtic. Collins putting pressure on McStay. Well, McStay looks very fit and lively indeed, getting more applause from the Celtic fans, ruling things now in midfield. There's Mitchell to Orr. Much of his layoff. Now Keith Houchin showing that to Fulton. Or picks it up again. Here to be wrestled there, rather, by Andy Walker. The free kick to Hibbs. And Neil Orr, I think, will be in a spot of trouble there. But something he said to the referee, can't think why, because the free kick had been given. and West Ham United. £100,000 well spent by Hibbs. There's Collins with a free kick. Up goes Gordon Ray. He did well to reach that. But no serious trouble for Pat Bonner. Well, a big skipper coming in there, getting a good header in, but again, straight at Bonner. But as I say, anything can happen in, in the closing minutes. You know, if the Hibbs could get one, it would set up a grandstand finish. Miller. And a good play from Grant. Very, very tight out there though at the touchline. Now a throw to Hibbs. And for Evans to chase. Grant giving chase. There's Archibald. Now Orr. Hunter coming forward. That was well read by young Fulton. He's found Mark McGee. And a very important challenge once again coming from Gordon Ray. Well, it's Fulton. And the body check by Gordon Hunter. Obstruction giving the free kick. 
kick to Celtic. Tommy Barnes trying to make progress on the left. Mark McGee looking up. It's blocked by Ray. Here's Barnes to Fulton. Back it goes to Aiken. Headed by Graham Mitchell. Tough collision there between Kane and Fulton. Young Celtic player to Ganock. There's Mitchell now trying to urge on his attack. Gareth Evans has space on the left. The chance to run at Peter Grant. Beautifully timed tackle. Not the kind of opportunity that Gareth Evans has been looking for. Correct, he just needed to knock it, you know, just a little bit firmer and it was clear. There's Gareth Evans. with Evans again and John Collins losing it to Miller and it's gone out and that'll be a throw I think to Celtic so signs of fatigue creeping in now and not surprisingly after the effort put into this match by both sides four minutes left it's been a hectic game uh, Jock and, and I think that uh, Houch and playing for Hibs today must be wondering what he's come up to here in Scotland because uh, the game seems to be 100 miles an hour for him. He's, he's not really getting into the game at all. And frustration showing in his face there as he concedes that free kick. Yeah. Although I must say I've been impressed with Stevie Archibald's contribution today. I thought he's played very, very well. His control has been good. He's, he's linked the game up. And uh, as you were saying before, maybe Houch and, and Archibald could be a partnership if they play, you know, a little bit more together. Sadly for Hooks, Steve Archibald seemed determined to leave at the end of the season, just as Houchin arrives. So it's Celtic coming forward again. Looks to be a task which is beyond Hibs now, with just three minutes remaining. 3-1 to Celtic. And the fruits of that opening half hour look as though they will be enough to see Celtic through to the Cup Final on the 20th of May. Here's stay to Barnes there's Tommy Barnes going all the way himself and eventually it's won there by John Collins at the edge of the box there's Houchin helping it on to Evans there's John Collins Archibald peeling to the right Neil Orr, now Tortolano. Corner is committed, and no mistake. Corner clearly would be a little bit concerned about his contribution when Hibbs scored their goal at the start of the second half, but this is a fine piece of goalkeeping. Committing himself early, judging it well, and a good, safe pair of hands. Chase on now for... McGee and Mitchell got there first. McCarthy doing well, there's Collins. Now Hunter. Archibald appeared to jump at Roy Aiken, rather. And yes, that's the view taken by both the linesman and the referee. The free kick to Celtic. Even the Hibs players now seem to acknowledge that they haven't a real prospect of saving the semi-final now. Just one minute left. And a free kick is given for that challenge by Grant on Evans. Tortellano's in a hurry. He's headed away. This is Miller. Good understanding of a start. 
Walker to Miller. There's Evans looking for Collins. And McCarthy read that early, going across to win possession. This may finish up out of the field, uh, out of play. Yes, McCarthy wastes a few seconds before turning it out for the th throw to Hibbs. Archibald laying it back for Tortolano. There's Mitchell. There's Graham Mitchell coming all the way himself. On his left foot, inside it goes to Houchin. And Aiken drags the ball away from Gareth Evans. Aiken on the counter attack now with McGee in the clear on the left. Walker, Aiken, and Miller wait in the middle. Chance for Celtic to finish with a flourish. Overdoing it though, and allowing Hunter to make the tackle. Well, the match finishing. A little bit of additional action, and Hibbs really could have pulled one back. Well, they deserve great credit, Ian, for making their contribution in the second half, don't they? Well, once they got their defence organised, uh, you know, when they made that substitution, they got organised away there. They've done well, the Hibbs, in the second half. You know, they've been equal at Celtic and, uh, and had a chance there just a couple of minutes ago. Again, Houchin looked a bit heavy legged when the, when the ball was running in the box. So we've had one minute of time added on at the end of the match for stoppages, and it's a free kick to Hibbs. They're very anxious to get another goal, even though it may not be enough. There's Neil off, lighting it in. Up goes Ray, and it's taken well by. Pat Bonner, but Keith Houchin had crept into an offside position, so it wouldn't have counted, I don't think. It's a free kick to Celtic. So Pat Bonner now may well have the last kick of the game. The referee is checking with both linesmen. Noise building up from the Celtic fans, and indeed there goes the final whistle. Celtic will win us by three goals to one, and Jim White has with him the Celtic manager, Billy McNeil. Billy McNeil, straight after, straight out of the final whistle. Three ones to Celtic, and you're in another final. You must be delighted with that. Well, I am, because obviously we were, the, the cover was very bare. Uh, when it came to picking the team, uh, I really had to look about and, and, and stretch the resources to the maximum. Um, I felt the first half belonged to us exclusively. The fact that Hibs came back, I think, just indicates that they're a good side. And we, although we lost the goal early in the half, we never looked as though we were going to lose another one. Uh, I felt the first half we were magnificent. And uh, the final back is how we're going to enjoy it. When you went 3 nothing up, Billy, it looked as if a rout was on, didn't it? Uh, well, it could have been. Half-time, unfortunately, it came at the wrong time for us. And uh, I think it breaks the momentum, it, and it did today. But uh, other than the goal that we lost, which uh, one or two of the boys were questioning that, um, other than that, we, we played comfortable at the back. We never looked for losing another one. Indeed, we could have added to the score. Steve Coulton, man of the match. Uh, you must be well pleased about that. Yes, uh, I'm delighted for, for uh, an 18-year-old to, to come in at this level and play so well. Particularly, you'll see that his hand's bandaged. We, we suspect he may have broken a, a bone in his hand. But uh, it's lovely to see him come in and do well. Billy, delighted for you. Great Celtic performance today. Many congratulations and thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. So a very happy Celtic manager Billy McNeil and some very happy Celtic supporters leaving Hampden Park after this tremendous semi-final. Ian St John, you haven't seen a semi-final live for a long time. What do you think of that? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it, Jock. I thought the football in the first half from Celtic was absolutely brilliant. Uh, well executed goals. I thought the second half performance by Hibbs made the, made the second half because it made Celtic battle a bit. And overall, I thought it was a terrific 90 minutes and I, I must say I thoroughly enjoyed the match. So that's the position here at Hamden. Celtic the winners by three goals to one. The goals coming from Mick McCarthy, Mark McGee and Andy Walker inside the first half hour. Steve Archibald getting one back in the second half for Hibbs and a great fight back. But Celtic held on comfortably. Steve Fulton winning the sponsors man of the match.